So this is a video about the Dell XPS 430, a 2008 system uh, designed for the enthusiasts who wanted a gaming or upper end system. And we have to take it back to March 26, 2006, when um, Dell bought out Alienware. Dell always had a reputation of uh, crap desktops um, with low performance and very much for the uh, work office uh, and they wanted to branch out into the highly profitable uh, gaming and enthusiast market. They um, obviously Alienware was uh, very well marketed um, but didn't have a high turnover uh, due to distributions. Um, Alienware kept its own name and its own brand but from the merger in 2006 Dell decided to build XPS systems as their answer to the um, Fantastic. I thought it was extreme performance system, but essentially all they were doing was um, making a cross between a commercial viable um, Alienware system and their own desktop system without taking away the top end of Alienware. So they were very close to Alienware in their performance specification, um, but not so much in price. Um, you could probably pick up the uh, 430 for uh, around about £1,000, which back in that day, a Alienware system would be three to £5,000, uh, roughly, although you would get a much higher specification specified uh, unit. Um, Dell with the XPS used their own motherboards and redesigned their motherboards whereas um, uh, Alienware would use off-the-shelf um, ATX motherboards from uh, Asus generally um, and MSI. So when they built the system they designed it with performance in mind and it's no slouch. The um, the 430 came in a few variations uh, with dual-core processors, two processors, two cores, and it also came with the quad-core processors, the Q6600 and the 950s and the Extreme Editions in some of them. However, the desktops were marketed as a multimedia uh, system for Blu-ray watching, um, HD videos, uh, video editing and and some gaming and they did offer uh, mid-range uh, graphics cards from ATI up to the uh, top of the line ones they didn't actually offer the um, uh, um, Nvidia cards I don't think anyway so it doesn't seem that from their marketing that they did offer the Nvidia cards which obviously at the time um, ATI uh, started to struggle um, with their graphics card and were coming in predominantly lower in price and still had a relatively good following from previous years when ATI was the leader. Um, it was around about the 8800 8, 8, 8800 GT that um, ATI really started slacking um, from then on with their graphics card and were playing follow-up for almost a decade uh, before they uh, started to make anything good. Um, obviously, as their uh, profits plummeted, um, what happened was AMD bought them out, and you know them as AMD today. So the AMD Radeon was, in fact, the ATI Radeon um, back in the day. And coupled with this system, not that it came with it, was a Radeon X3 870 X2 which is a dual graphics card um, SLI well, Crossfire edition uh, card with two GPUs on the one card to boost performance and it even plays Crisis. So uh, without ado let's uh, look at the uh, system and we'll go on to some benchmarks which weren't particularly brilliant um, but weren't absolutely rubbish either. So in the B-roll here next to me uh, or there or wherever I've put it you'll see there's the benchmark. Now I was expecting a round about 21,000 um, score on this uh, give or take and I think we only got up to about 18 um, I tried to have um, do a memory upgrade in the system um, it came with um, a, a, a lot of problems uh, with Dell um, they you have to understand the ethos of their BIOS now their BIOS they all use two 
maybe two different suppliers from RAM and therefore they only program that into the BIOS. This really does cause problems when you're trying to use aftermarket BIOS in there to really get it working. So um, I tried some, it should be obviously a uh, 1333, uh, there was a 10 1066 I think in there um, so obviously the memory performance was uh, piss poor um, and the um, 1333 wouldn't work in it at all and I ended up putting out some uh, 1600 which because of the timing differences uh, to get that speed we were perfectly fine so it did run although I did was running it on um, 4 gigs not, not 8 uh, simply because it wouldn't actually take eight for some reason it just wouldn't boot um, but it would take six which is a really bizarre uh, situation to have with a dual channel system with four slots to only be able to use three so I don't know why but uh, we would have to ask Dell that question but there was questions in it it can use certain RAM um, it can actually go up to 16 gigs, it has been known. There's been no BIOS updates on it since 2011 and therefore you're probably not going to get anything else from them and you're stuck with what you got. Is it a bad performance system? No, it's not. It's actually quite um, good. Um, average, above average. Um, I deal a lot with, obviously, my system is a Ryzen 7 um, and it performs very well and it's got one of the latest mid-range graphics cards, the 1660 in there. So in comparison to that, it's a lot slower, but I am using mechanical drives and I'm sure that if I put it over to an SSD drive, I would still get very good performance from it. The... <sighs> Performance on the drives was a bit of an issue. I ran a, a benchmark for the hard drives and um, it came up as 140 to 165 megabits per second, which is crazy odd because it should be around the four to 600 mark, but we were getting nowhere near it. I went back then, looked at the hard drives themselves. There was no errors in them. They were pretty good and of low usage because this computer had only been used for about two years before it was uh, storaged. Um, so what we had, um, I looked it up and the review was hilarious to read as, oh, one of the fastest desktop hard drives around with 70 megs per second. So obviously 70 and 70 is around about 140. Um, so yeah, so anything over the 140 mark was actually relatively good performance for this type of RAID, which is an ICR9 chip set. So we did get relatively good performance. Um, it was a bit appalling. I was expecting somewhere near 300, but the drives are pretty, um, well, they're not, they're old, but they're not very used. Um, but their performance isn't exactly ideal. I can get higher performance on a lot of other systems uh, using drives from around that time, uh, which perform a lot better than what is installed in there, which is Western Digital Blue drives. So. The overall performance of the system was quite good. The build quality is relatively good. It does use a bespoke motherboard. Um, it is an odd layout. And they haven't gone to town with the hardware that you get with it. So it meets basic specifications quite easily. And the performance is relatively good. Especially from the Q99. 9550 which is installed in it. It played Fire Cry quite well, although I had to pull the graphics card out of it and install something that was a bound, according to user benchmark tests, about 600 to 1000% more performance. And that was to put in a relatively older card, I suppose, which was the 7, 7, uh, 750 uh, GTX graphics card, which obviously performs much better and on much less power than the ATI card would use. The card itself performed quite admirably well in crisis at ultra high settings throughout. We were getting around about 70 to 77 frames per second and inside the um, uh, high setting, that was high settings, uh, ultra high was about 54 to about 63. So we did get playable gameplay from it um, on high and ultra high 
or very high or whatever it is in, in crisis and it was a pleasant experience. The CD benchmark, um, Cinebench 2015 scored quite well considering. So what I've done is I've, here we go, so we, I benchmarked it up against a dual core a, a Pentium D945 uh, or 950 and that managed to score on a, on a HP disabled system uh, 68 whereas it was 200 or oh, 340 for some reason I can't there it is so we were getting 312 on the XPS system which isn't too bad considering now the 6600 performs slightly under that at about 250 give or take but with Cinebench every time you go to bench your own computer it tends to change uh, a couple of points anyway and I've noticed that with my Ryzen system so overall the system performance is pretty good even for games today with crisis making uh, most uh, computers have serious issues however I haven't really had that problem I did however benchmark a different system uh, which was a HP the dual core system and I found that it was appalling its Cinebench score was just a measly 68 to give a comparative for the uh, same sort of era systems around that time the um, performance difference was quite considerable when we talk about i5s and i7s on uh, CPU Z, if you drop all the way down, you can get the E8500 uh, um, and its benchmark and see the results there against this. And also the uh, other system, uh, which is an i7. And the i7 is probably 300% uh, better uh, in performance. So there you go. Um, overall though it's a quite a nice looking system and even still fairly contemporary today um, I wouldn't say that it wouldn't run uh, most games today obviously the graphics performance and the mem memory on it is very important so you will get issues and problems arising from that now the um, system memory is obviously one of the key issues um, to this and obviously the graphics memory is a significant issue also but there's no need to shy away from it I was pleasantly surprised by its performance to be honest um, with a benchmark score of 19,334 it came in on the graphics card as the 31st in the benchmarks at 3D Mark 05 um, however, the performance across that graphics card differs quite a lot because some people have used it with i7s and scored over 40,000, so the processor is picking up the slack. So we can't tell with most of these, obviously, on 3D Mark, you'll notice that most of them are overclocked. Um, processors. There was no overclocking in this. The tape trick didn't work to bring it up to the 3.4 gigahertz, um, what you would expect, because the Dell BIOS uh, prohibits that kind of uh, thing from happening. Um, the case you can't, by the looks of it, uh, change it over to something different, a standard ATX. Although a lot of people have gone into BTX and and waffled rubbish about that, because obviously the case opens on its right side, not its left side. Um, which is quite odd for some people however you just put the board in and it works anyway so uh, yeah quite an entertaining one that one uh, the uh, the system is quite a nice case the performance is quite good the airflow is relatively good considering it has the what 120 mil fan at the front blowing through a cooler um, and then going out the back with no rear fan on there at all and I believe the power supply fans on the front side of it as well and that is quite a low airflow coming through there but I've noticed anyway the processor ran around about 50 degrees and the graphics card the ATI ran about 67 degrees which is actually the factory temperatures for them as I said to you the graphics card had not really been used that much uh, probably a couple of months before the system went into storage it's running Windows Vista as well, so as we know, that was always a bit of a pain. Um, but, you know, it's a relatively modern uh, operating system. I'm sure with XP, we would have got an extra 
couple of thousand points on the benchmarks but I haven't put it through user benchmarks and other things like that um, I've just generally been um, stripping down and cleaning up the system it wasn't too dusty inside there was a little bit of dust around the front as you can see in the design of the case those two big holes there lead through to a quite an open vent inside so it would even be still quite a good case for modern computers that needed that extra bit of um, airflow but uh, whether you'd fit them in there is a different matter because of the layout and obviously when you take the boards out there's usually bits of metal which would short out most boards so it would require quite a bit of modification um, overall, yeah, a pretty good, decent system. Um, so, have a look through the video. Obviously, we're uh, doing a little tour of it here in the background. And, um, yeah, uh, relatively good system capable of gaming. Um, if you're buying one of these used, um, do check to see what process is in there. Obviously, you can't upgrade it so much. Um, so, you're looking at probably paying out about £70. Uh, to £120 for the top end um, 775 processor, um, another £16 per 2GB stick to put in there. You can only put 2GB sticks in there as far as I have been able to find out. Um, so that would only give you 8 gigs of RAM, which is pretty good um, for most gaming things and applications these days. It will take a PCI Express uh, graphics card, there doesn't seem to be any major issues in that. Um, and really, I, I can't, the 425 watts isn't too bad for even now modern computer processors um, and graphics cards, so you wouldn't struggle with the power supply that was in there. There is ample of, quick, um, ample of connections in there anyway. It, only on the 425 watts, the 325 or 75 or whatever it is probably hasn't got the additional power plugs for your graphics card um, they went into the performance system so if you are looking for a Dell 430 or the 420 if you get the power supply you should know exactly what processor or maybe graphics card is in there but they are the 3000 um, series from ATI um, that are generally installed in them. I think there was some in the later 2009 period that had the um, uh, 4000 series in there, um, up to mid-range as far as I know. So they did it for about two years or so. Um, you know, you couldn't really... Um, you can really fault them on the system, really, to be honest. Uh, at around about a £1,000 um, for the base model, which is the Q6600. Um, you know, they did one at Best Buy as well, which had a slightly different version. So just, uh, yeah, to keep that in mind, they are, uh, yeah, as a XP system um, retro, it would be really good. Um, as a Vista system, it's pretty good as well. Um, Windows 7 and Windows 10 actually run on it as well so it's not a big issue although I don't really particularly like the drive speed on there I haven't put some Raptor drives in it to see if it improves greatly or not um, but you know that's one of the things that possibly someone would, might do although I'd probably just go for SSDs um, and chuck them in there there's no real space for um, additional drives in there as well unless you have a um, 5.25 uh, conversion tray just to shove another drive up at the top there although some came with blu-ray this one had blu-ray but obviously someone else quite liked it and took the blu-ray drive out of it so i don't have the blu-ray for it but for everything else it's perfectly fine well, I hope you enjoyed this little intro video to the Dell XPS 430 and that you might want to subscribe and click on the playlist and not the channel because I don't just do computers. Thank you for watching.